Idra recently announced that they are shipping only the second 9,000 ton gigapress in existence to China rather than the United States, the first one, of course, going to Giga Texas. The question in everyone's mind, of course, is who's purchasing this and what are they going to use it for? Let's take a look. Hey, y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. So first of all, go dogs. <laughs> it was a lot of fun watching that game last night. Sorry for all the TCU fans. It was a um, <clears throat> bit of a pound down. Anyway, this morning, before I go to teach, I wanted to do a quick video about the possibility that the new 9,000 ton Giga Press is going to Giga Shanghai. In other words, Tesla's Giga Shanghai. And if it is, what it could be used for and how important this actually is. So firstly, here's the tweet that caught my attention and a lot of people's attention. This is from Tesla owner Silicon Valley, and it was on the 9th of January. It says, update, Idra Group announces a second 9,000 ton gigapress is heading to Asia. But to who? What are your thoughts? And of course, tagged Elon Musk, who has not replied at the time of recording of this video. And a quick sidebar for those who say Idra in the United States, it's Idra, it's Italian, the I is an E sound. So anyway, <laughs> it bugs me when I hear that. So it's Idra. And weirdly enough, Idra's Gigapress video is the most popular video that I've ever released on my channel. Seems very weird and very specific to a topic, but that's the way it works. And of course, if you're interested in catching that episode after you watch this one, you can check that out. It explains what a Gigapress is in a lot more detail. I'm not going to really go into it. But basically what this does is this turns a gigantic automobile into a Hot Wheels car. That's probably the fastest way of talking about it. And interestingly enough, this actually came out of Elon Musk playing with either a Matchbox or a Hot Wheels car. I don't remember which one. But anyway, on the bottom it says die cast. And I always remember as a child, I was like, ooh, that's cool. It says die cast metal. But the basic idea is that you have a press and for a Hot Wheels, it's very, very small. And you fill that with some sort of liquefied metal like aluminum or something like that under very, very hot conditions. You cool it down very, very rapidly under high pressure. And then you pop the press open, you drop the part out, you close it back again, fill it and do all that stuff over and over again. So the basic idea is that you're creating not a whole bunch of parts out of more traditional methods, but creating one very large part, but creating one very large part instead. And of course, famously, the Tesla Model Y was the first vehicle that used the Giga Press. I believe that was an 8,000 ton one, but don't quote me on that. It was It's smaller than 9,000 tons. That's what I know. But anyway, it used it for the back of the vehicle to create one large casting for the back of the vehicle. And then the rest of the car was assembled in a more traditional manner. Now, of course, they have more presses and they use that to create the front of the vehicle as well. I'm not positive whether they're using this for the Model 3 just yet, but I know that they do have plans to do that as well. And of course, it's a very poorly kept secret that Tesla is going to be using the Gigapress, the new 9,000 ton Gigapress in Austin, Texas to help build the Cybertruck. And if you haven't caught it, you can go watch the Monroe Live video episode where Sandy kind of his jaws on the floor, realizing that the entire back end of the Cybertruck might actually be one die casting. So anyway, all of that is very impressive. The question comes down to what in the heck is Tesla going to be doing with this 9,000 ton Gigapress in Shanghai? It's very unlikely they're going to build the Cybertruck in Shanghai, China, because this is a truck that's basically too large to be used outside of the North American market. And so unless they're building a smaller Cybertruck, which I don't think is very likely in the near future, obviously in the far future, yes, indeed, they could be doing that. But in the near future, it would make much more sense to build it in the United States and then distribute it in North America lot lower shipping costs, you don't have to pay tariffs, things like that. So the likelihood is not that Giga Shanghai would be using this. When I saw this announcement yesterday, I thought that BYD might be, you know, having this shipped to them and they might be trying to utilize it for one of their vehicles. But that also seems unlikely because BYD does not seem to be into the ultra large Giga castings yet. So what is option C in this list? Well, option C is, as Jonathan from Cleaner Watt actually pointed out yesterday, that the Tesla Model 2 might be the destination. Again, I say Model 2. It's not going to be called Model 2, but the $25,000 to $30,000, much less expensive car, might be the intended use case for this. And if we look at this patent illustration that Jonathan, again, from 
Wienerwatt was kind enough to go and dig up, and I'm, yes, I'm using his thing. I'll put a link to his video in the description so you can check it out as well. But anyway, you can see from this patent application, which apparently was later abandoned, but you can see here in the middle that this indicates that an entire vehicle is being created by this GigaPress rather than parts of the vehicle. So currently with the Model Y, you stamp one part for the back, one part for the front, and you have a battery tray in the middle, and then you build a frame over the top of it, you put the aluminum on. So there's still a lot of steps after doing the Giga Pressing. But of course, as you can see from the middle part here, the indication from this patent application is that they would press the entire vehicle at once. Now, I, I, I agree with Jonathan that the fact that this particular patent was abandoned is not necessarily something that indicates that they've decided this is impossible, but they might have changed the methodology, and I believe they might have distinctly changed what they're actually going to press out of this vehicle. So what do I mean by that? Well, if you look at a pressing, especially if you look at this patent application, the more complex the shape, and especially if you have a three-dimensional shape that wraps around, the press becomes much more complicated, right? If you think about it, you know, pressing a flat sheet, right? Casting a flat sheet is no big deal. Sorry, I should say casting instead of pressing. Anyway, casting a flat sheet is relatively easy. Casting one with a little bit of roundedness is easy, relatively easy. When you get into the crazy die shapes where you have little fingers and things like that pointing out, that becomes much more complicated. And of course, it's very, very challenging because within milliseconds, you have to fill this entire press with molten aluminum or some sort of metal, and then it has to be cooled down and popped out very, very quickly. That's the challenge of this, is not necessarily the casting, but being able to do it rapidly enough that the metal doesn't start to cool and crystallize before it's actually cast into the correct shape. Super complicated stuff. I don't even pretend to understand the metallurgy involved in trying to make something like that work. But when you think about this, just the mold shape itself, the more complex the mold shape, the more difficult it is to do this. And then if you have something that wraps around it, right? So you're trying to make a mold that goes like this and squishes everything together. If you have it, it has to go all the way around. How do you make a mold that looks like that? And if you look at this vehicle inside, it's actually a three-dimensional shape, right? I mean, a 3D shape that wraps around, obviously. Everything's 3D. But you've got the bottom part of the car, but also the top part of the car being constructed. And that is a very, very, I don't, I don't know that it's necessarily even physically possible to do that. Now, again, Tesla does things that I think are impossible all the time. So maybe it is. But just from a basic physics standpoint, it seems like that might be incredibly challenging to impossible possible to do that as one piece. So then what is left? Well, what is left is my concept of a vehicle, a Model 2, again, quote unquote, Model 2, that's made with a Cybertruck style stainless steel exoskeleton on top. So my, you know, thinking about this at this point is what they would do instead of trying to create the entire shape of the vehicle with the top part of the vehicle as well, they would cast the entire bottom of the vehicle and then use stainless steel to create the top because you have an exoskeleton which effectively acts as the frame of the vehicle and the outside part of the vehicle. And that's the advantage for the Cybertruck is you don't have to build that frame inside of, of aluminum panels that get hung on them. And so if you imagine this 9,000 ton Gigapress being able to crank out just boom, it makes one entire piece for the whole underbody of the vehicle, that would be an amazing achievement in its own right, right? That's, that's basically creating three thirds of the Tesla Model Y rather than one third. And of course, the middle section could be relatively sparse. It could just be kind of some bars or something like that because you could put a structural battery pack inside the vehicle, which would add the rigidity and structure that you need. So you could create a relatively complex back and front with kind of bars across the middle to create that space to drop the structural battery pack into. So if you imagine this thing like upright like this, you would create a mold, bam, you create it, you drop it out, you do whatever you need to do, you put the battery pack inside of it, then you have your exoskeleton that you build separately and you just marry these two things together and you're done. And remember, a huge advantage of this die casting methodology is that you get parts that are identical every single time. You don't have all of this play. Sandy Monroe likes to talk about the cost of quality. When you build something and it doesn't quite fit together right, down the line somewhere, some guy is, you know, literally with a sledgehammer, bashing these things to try to make the parts fit together so that you have a lot of time that's expended putting the parts together, but then also making sure that they actually fit and you don't have weird panel gaps and all of that other stuff that Tesla used to be criticized for so much. So here the basic methodology becomes stamp out the bottom of the vehicle, the frame of the bottom of the vehicle, put the structural battery pack that you've built separately someplace else into that to create the rigidity for the middle section. Again, the whole thing is one unit, but the middle 
part could be flexed a lot because it's not there's not a lot of stuff in there yet. You put the structural battery pack into that, then you take your exoskeleton that you've built elsewhere and you put all of the stuff that you want to, like the seat rails and all of those things inside. You just stick those together, weld them as you need to, and you've got a basic car that's done in a fraction of the time with a fraction of the robots, a fraction of the human intervention, a fraction of all of the stuff that goes into building a car. And that would be a game changer. And if you recall, Elon Musk was talking about how the next generation vehicle is supposed to be 50% less time, effort, expense in building the vehicle. Well, how do you do that? You do that by building it in as few parts as possible, and this enables that style of building. And when I talked about the Model 2 recently, which you can check out up here, I discussed how I thought that Shanghai would be the place that they would start building the Model 2, and then this hypothetical factory in Mexico would be the next stage. So they'd have one in China first, and then they would build one in Mexico as well. But China is the perfect place to build a vehicle like this. The labor costs are relatively low. They've got really good supply chain, all of that kind of stuff. And if they can build this car for, I mean, gosh, we could be looking at fifteen to $20,000 to build this car at this point. If they can do it this way, if this actually works, they could be looking at something like that for the speed of being able to build these vehicles, reducing the cost as much as it will. And of course, using lithium iron phosphate or LFP batteries as well to reduce costs and increase longevity and reliability. So Again, remember, this thing is is not just a vehicle. I, I predict that the first ones will be with steering wheel and acceler accelerator pedal because FSD has taken so long. But Elon's ultimate goal is for these to be robo taxis. So the more robust these vehicles can be, the better, because that means they can be driven much, much longer times. And then, of course, remember that Elon Musk has teased that during their investor day in uh, early March, of March 1st, something like that, early March of 2023, they're going to talk about a major unveiling. And I also talked about how the Model 2, they wouldn't want to announce it too much before they were able to produce it. So if they've got this thing on the way, they could have it relatively well set up. It takes a really long time to get these things shipped and then set up and tested and all of that. But, you know, by March, they could be in a situation where they have this thing in place and some testing has been done at this point. And, you know, they want to minimize the amount of time between the announcement and rolling this thing off the assembly line. So if they've been working on this and who knows, maybe the the one in Texas, they've been using the 9,000 ton Gigapress to kind of play around with this new model, the Model 2, instead of the Cybertruck at this point, because, you know, you just have to change out the molds in order to make a different shape. So they could have been doing, you know, pre-trial runs and stuff or changing out the molds. I don't know. I'm not predicting that that's the case, but I'm saying they could have done that to determine the efficacy of using this thing for such a gigantic and crazy shape as the bottom part of a Model 2 vehicle. But if they have, that means they could know that this was going to work ahead of time and that they would be able to ramp relatively quickly if they announced it in March maybe they could roll a few of these vehicles off the line by the end of the year. I think it would be more like a full year at that point. But anyway, you're reducing the time. You're not talking about three years, like, or five years or whatever. You know, the semi-truck and the Cybertruck, et cetera. You're not talking about these huge time gaps between announcing something and rolling it off the line. So I think Tesla has learned from the past with the Model 3 that you don't want to announce something too early before you know you can build it and how you're going to build it. So if this is indeed going to China and they're indeed going to be in announcing this in March, that is going to be a huge deal. Likely, we will not hear anything more about this until March because, of course, Tesla is not going to tell us because that would be stupid. <laughs> That's the whole point. They don't want to be telling people about a much, much cheaper vehicle and, and you know, getting rid of sales that they could have until they're ready to themselves. So anyway, that's my speculation. I would be curious to find out what you all think about that, whether you think this is going to the Model 2, whether it's not going to Tesla at all and it's going to a competitor like BYD. Anyway, definitely let me know in the comments. And of course, in the meantime, if you enjoyed the episode, please do like it so other people can find it. And of course, consider subscribing for more of this kind of content. As always, a huge shout out to my Patreon on Patreon. Thank you all so much for your help and your support. I truly do appreciate it. And if you want to join the team in 2023, just check out the link in the description. And if you're interested in a whole bunch of really cool merch, check out our merch store. Link is in the description. We have Tesla bot t-shirts, the Tesla meme t-shirt, success is a possible outcome, 4680 battery cells. All of that stuff is on t-shirts, mugs, tumblers, and on and on. So check it out. And for those of you interested in investing, check out Webull, an amazing platform for buying and selling stocks, and now cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and others. Open an account and get a free stock valued at up to $200,
and fund your account and get another free stock valued at up to $1,600. Check out the link in the description and help the channel at the same time. Thank you. And finally, don't forget we are both Tesla and Amazon affiliates. If you look in the description, you can see how going shopping for a solar roof, a power wall, or anything on Amazon helps out the channel. In the meantime, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.